Okay, so just remember the GRI report can be useful too. So for your company, you can also see, you can search for their CSO report, right? Or GRI sustainability reporting to find the information. The GR, UN, the G, UN GRI is the standard that most of the companies do, right? So I'm sure the company has made their general reporting. Uh, report, so you can also search for this UNGRI report and your company name. Okay, that can help you see the different sections. Okay, so let's continue with the class. So, uh, the last time we said that uh, we have all these environmental problems, and we showed this graph which shows the issue of economic growth and in the environment. Okay? So, we were discussing at the end of the class, what's the solution? So discuss with your partner, what is the solution to this problem? We have the environmental problems, okay? and as the economy grows, we need more energy. So, a higher GDP has higher energy consumption. So discuss with your partner, what's the solution to this problem? Energy. Okay? 
uh, like LED light bulb that saves energy. So, uh, but also Bill Gates and some other philanthropists, they put together some funds. Some of the world's wealthiest men and women put together their money to try and do the same thing also, right? Find some new renewable energy. Okay. So, uh, we need to make a deep decarbonization of the energy system. So we need energy efficiency, people use less energy. Electrification, use electric instead of the oil. And low carbon electricity, renewable electricity. Okay. So we need to work on those things. So companies, what can companies do? Companies need to do these things too, right? You're reading about that now in your company. They need to be more energy efficient, not wasting the energy. They need to use electric more than oil power, right? And they need to change their electricity, right? To make sure that they're getting electricity from renewable energy rather than other types of energy. So we'll see that when you do your assignment, uh, what some companies are doing for the environment. Agriculture is also an important point, okay? We need this kind of energy efficient and low carbon energy, but we also need the farm to change their system. Because the, we've mentioned that agriculture is causing a lot of ecological damage through the fertilizer and using up all the water. So the farm systems of the world is not sustainable. If the farm system continue in the same way, it's not going to be sustainable. Population can also help the environment. Okay? If people have lower families, lower number of children in their families, so better family planning. Education for girls. Some people say if we have just one thing, one magic wand or one thing that can change the world, education for girls might be that one thing, okay? Uh, because if we educate all the girls, in Korea, developed countries, we have a lot of equal education, right? But in other developing and emerging economies still, people think that it's better to pay for the boys or the girls. They, don't send them to the university, that kind of thing, right? Or even to the high school. So if we can educate girls, then maybe they have more careers. It also helps they have better family planning, but also helps for developing the new technology and developing the economy in the different countries. Okay? Uh, decent jobs and less discrimination against women right? can help too uh, in the population area. So here we can see the fertility trajectory. So we can see the least developed country. At the moment, we're in 2015 here. So the least developed country has the highest fertility rate for children per family. Okay, we can see the green line. The developed region is, you know, two. Two children, almost two per couple, means it's a stable, right? Emerging economies is higher but coming down. So the population should also, uh, we should have a lot of smaller families. So do you have any question about the environment, environmental issue? No? Do you think companies have a responsibility for the environment too? Yeah. Or it doesn't matter, just follow the law. Just follow the law or res responsibility? Responsibility. Right? So they have to go further than the law because it's hard to make global law. We explained before and we'll talk about it later, okay? We have to get all of the countries to agree, like the Kyoto Protocol, that kind of thing. So in the end, the law is not that strict, global law. So we need the companies to do some voluntary responsibility, corporate social responsibility and sustainability on the environment. So uh, let's then talk about the sustainable development goals. So the sustainable development goals uh, are made by the leaders of the world and the UN together. So what are, we don't have a world government, but what we do have is the G20. Do you know G20? What is the G20? What is the G20? G7, G8, G20? Do you know what it means? Well, 
there's no rule for being in the G20, but large economies, right? Big GDP. So here we can see they're all at the United Nations includes everybody, right? Then on a lower level we have G20, where 20 governments includes countries like Argentina, Brazil, Turkey, as well as the G7. What countries are in the G7? US, China, mm -hmm. France, British, maybe. Yes, Japan. Okay, what countries are in the G20? A lot of the emerging, big emerging economies like Russia, Brazil, China. So these days the G20 is more important than the G7. It used to be the G7 was more important, just the seven main economies were deciding things, but now we have 20 main economies. Just one note on the G20, Iran's economy is bigger than Thailand, but Thailand is included in the G20. Okay, so G20 is not actually based on the GDP, right? So Iran had a bad relationship with the US and some other countries, so it wasn't included. Right? So they meet every so often and they discuss about things. And one of the things they discuss is sustainable development for the world. Okay? Here, who is this guy? Thank you, man. Okay, so we can see all the world leaders come to this kind of conference. So this was in Rio. So uh, at Rio, plus 20, leaders from all over the world took stock of 40 years of environmentalists and 20 years of environmental treaties. And what they realized is that this challenge of combining economic growth and social inclusion and environmental sustainability were unmet and in getting more challenging. Okay? We said that was the sustainable development. So they made these goals, goals for the world. Okay? So the sustainable development goals should be action-oriented, means that people should do action, some action because of it. Concise, easy to communicate, limited in number, aspirational. Aspirational means we have to push ourselves, right? Not too easy. Okay? Global and universally applicable to all countries. So these are the sustainable development goals they made. Okay? Let's look at them. End extreme poverty, including hunger. Do you understand extreme poverty? The world is actually doing quite well on this. It was Before the Sustainable Development Goals, we had Millennium Development Goals, made in 2010. And one of the, made in 2000, Millennium, do you understand Millennium? 1000, right? 2000 to 2010, we had the MDGs. They were quite successful. For example, they aimed a 50% reduction in child poverty. And they got, they were able to reach that goal. Okay? In that time. Some goals they could reach, some goals they couldn't reach. This is the new set of goals. Do you think they can do this in 10 years? End extreme poverty, including hunger? Hmm? If they really wanted to, they might be able to end extreme poverty. Right? Mm, the money that they spent on solving the financial crisis in the US or the UK, they spent that money on poverty, they could have ended extreme poverty for example. Okay? So extreme poverty means, for example, living on less than one dollar a day. Okay? Not having enough to eat, that kind of thing. They want to achieve the economic development within planetary boundaries. We talked about the planetary boundaries, the environment. Right? So think about the environment as we develop the economy. Ensure effective learning for all children. Okay? So make sure all children have a chance to get the education. Achieve gender equality, social inclusion, and human rights for all. Achieve health and well-being at all ages. Improve the agricultural systems. Raise the road productivity. Empower inclusive, productive, and resilient cities. Curb means stop or reduce human-induced climate change and ensure sustainable energy. We can see here sustainable energy is mentioned. Secure ecosystem services and biodiversity and ensure good management of water and other natural resources. And then the last one, transform governance. Okay, in the business sector and, and other areas. We talked about corporate governance and good governance. So those are the 10 sustainable development goals that the UN and the world leaders are working on. 
So companies should also be aware of that, right? That this is the, what the world is working on together at the moment. So number 10 is very important. So Jeffrey Sachs, the guy who made this course, he was an important person in making these SDGs together with the governments. Okay? So good, he says this one is very important, governance. So good governance includes transparency, accountability, access to information, participation, ending tax havens, we'll talk about later, tax havens more, and efforts to stamp out corruption. So stop corruption. So we need to uh, make these rules, improve these rules on finance, trade, corporate reporting, technology, IP, and so on. Okay. So he says that if we, to do one through nine, we need to have good governance. Okay. Good governance is a key point in doing those things. Do you know JFK? Who is JFK? President of where? Who was assassinated from the US, right? What was JFK's great achievement? <laughs> Getting killed? No. First man on the moon, right? First man on the moon was under JFK. 